thrown out there to the side by Bateman. Coughed up. Conway with a clever step through Gilroy. Didn't make the sweetest of contact, but the Ackery's there the same. It has been an absolutely cracking game. Taken six seasons of AFLW, but a team finally cracks the magical century, and it's Melbourne. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the W Show. Thanks to NAB. Well, that D's side is certainly making a statement in 2022. Can they follow in the footsteps of their men's side and clinch an historic flag? We will discuss that and so much more as we unpack round nine of the AFL W season for 2022. And here to help me do all of that is Collingwood co captain Bree Davy. Bree, welcome to you. Thank you very much, Nat, and Liv as well. It's always good to be here. Libby Birch, of course, uh, Melbourne star, who is about to play her 50th game. We will speak about that in a little while. But, geez, the Ds, they're just rolling on. Yeah, I know. It's coming to the exciting point of the season now. We should mention, too, that Sarah Black, unfortunately, won't be with us today. She had a wisdom teeth out. I mean, come on, girls. She had it out on Friday. Should she harden up a little bit and, and be here right now, do you think? Oh, no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah, look, I had him out not too long ago, so I feel you, Sarah. I hope you're doing all right. But, yeah, okay, and that's been a bit hard on you. <laughs> OK, all right, Sarah, we, we do miss you and we, uh, we wish you very well. All right, let's get straight into things. I want to start talking about the Adelaide game that your pies, Bree, um, came up against a, a pretty good Adelaide side, but it was fast finishing from the Collingwood side and you got so close. So Chloe Malloy kicks this goal. It was a brilliant little snap here with about two minutes to go. And then you had quite a few shots just maybe blazed away a little bit. What was the fallout after this game? And did you think maybe there was a lack of composure in the dying moments? Yeah, look, it's a tough one. Like, when you get to that point in the game, you're chasing it as well. So sometimes, I guess, there is a little bit of, I guess, not composure or a yeah, bit of panic. panic. But, um, yeah, look, I think we got it forward and, and we really pressed Adelaide. It was just a matter of finishing our work, which we, we couldn't do, um, even though we gave it our best, our best crack. But, look, after the game, to be honest, we were really proud of the performance we put in. I think that our pressure was quite elite um, and we sort of got up in Adelaide's face, which we knew we had to yeah. do, but I thought we executed that quite well. Again, it was just a couple of little errors here and there and um, some things that we sort of missed, opportunities um, that, that let us down. But all in all, we were proud. Obviously, it stung. We lost by two points, and that's yeah. never easy. But, um, yeah, definitely proud of our efforts, at least. So it's really tight if we take a look at the ladder and where things sit at the moment after nine rounds of footy. And if you had won, that would have sealed your spot in finals in the top six. So the Bulldogs are actually breathing down your neck right now. And the only way, really, to lock in the final spot for Collingwood is to beat Richmond next week. If you look at the ladder positions, you probably think on paper... Richmond's a fairly easy beat. I'm going to ask you about that in a second, Libby. But, Bree, from your perspective um, with this game, do you mention, do you talk about the fact that finals are on the line or do you try not to focus on that? Look, uh, we all know it, it's sort of on the line. We, I think if we all do our own math, we can see that. <laughs> so, look, we don't, we don't put too much of an emphasis on it, but going into the game, we'll naturally know it is a big game. Yep. And we do know that as, if we can control what we can control, which is the game against Richmond, and hopefully we get the win and, and do the work and go through the process, um, we'll be all right. But, um, yeah, it, it's not something we try to dwell on too much. It's just something we know in the back of our head that it's important. I mean, Libby, this game against the Giants, Richmond, super feisty. Yeah. It was a very fiery game at times. They are a dangerous side. They, they are actually a threat. What are the danger areas for the Pies that they need to watch out for? Yeah, I think Richmond, as you saw, they, they really got into the Giants' faces early and put a really good score on the board from that first quarter. So I think for Collingwood, uh, the one thing that I love playing Richmond was that they were 1v1 team. They're really competitive. They like the contested possessions. They love the pressure game. Uh, so I think for Collingwood, it'll be managing their forward, Richmond's forward line, which has now got Wakefield in it, yeah. uh, which which adds a lot to mm -hmm. Richmond's side. And then also their midfield with, obviously, the likes of Bree Davey and Britt Benici out. Um, they obviously show that they can do it and match the best against Adelaide, uh, but it'll be a tough and fast finishing round 10. I mean, Bree, you feel for the Tigers, don't you? Because they lost Cordner and then Wakefield has been out for so much of the season. They've had just a ton of injuries, but to crucial players as well. It's hard for a team, isn't it? Yeah, look, it is really tough. It's, I think, emotionally, mentally, um, and just 
you know, when you're such a tight knit group, any of your players go down yeah. and you feel for them. So we've had some hurdles and we, we have we have acknowledged that and then sort of parked it and sort of said, you know, at the end of the day, our process beats teams, not certain players. So yeah. we know that as a group, we can match the best, sort of like Liv mentioned, we, we really took it to Adelaide and, and mm. we can do it. Yeah. It's just about keeping it consistent now if we can as a group. Um, but Liv, I'm sure you guys have felt it at times as well with players going down and things like that as well. Yeah. Well, luckily you've got someone like a Ruby Schleicher who's just stepping up and having 31 touches in a game. So she's doing pretty well at the moment. I want to talk about North Melbourne. The Lions got the job done over the Roos yesterday. You look at the Roos, though, they've had three losses this season. Those losses have come against Adelaide, Melbourne and, of course, Brisbane that I mentioned. And they're going to have to start beating sides who are above them on the ladder when it comes to the crunch, when it comes to finals. From what you've seen, Libby, where do they need to bridge the gap? How do they actually beat some of these top sides? Yeah, I think North Melbourne is obviously a great side and they have some incredible players, you'd have to agree, Bree. Yeah. But I think what they've done this year is they play a very uncontested style of game. So kick mark, kick mark, and that's how they build their offence. So against the better sides, it's quite easy to shut that down because you play one-on-one -on -one and you just get the ball to ground. So I think it's adding another layer to their offence so that they can have multiple options they can go to throughout a game. When you don't beat those top sides, Breen, you don't get that scalp and you know you're going to have to face them during the finals, does it start to play in your mind a little bit? Can it become a bit of a mental game? Yeah, definitely. I think as well when you get to crunch time and then towards mm. finals and things like that, it a lot of the time it is a mental game. You know, all the teams you're going to come across are good mm. teams. They're there for a reason. So it does become quite mental. And so things like not being able to sort of bridge the gap between those those top teams or trying to win games against those top teams, if, if that's sort of something that you've had in the past, it can definitely play on your mind. Their forward line too just hasn't quite worked out for mine looking at it. But what, what are your thoughts, Libby? Yeah, I re when we play North Melbourne, I really think their asset is their height. Uh, and they need to play king forward. Uh, and, and, yeah, king <laughs> yeah. forward uh, as, a, as a key forward yeah. and key marking forward, even just to bring it to ground for their small forwards. Because I think at the moment, uh, yeah, that forward line is struggling and they've struggled all year just to get that cohesiveness. And they've got the inside 50s, no doubt. Yeah. But it's just their ability to mark inside 50 and have a good quality shot on goal. Well, round nine was a wonderful celebration of three absolute stars of our game. And I'm speaking, of course, about Brisbane Premiership players in Emily Bates and Ali Anderson. And, of course, a two-time Premiership player mm -hmm. at the Adelaide Crows in Ebony Marinoff. The first three women to reach 50 games in the AFLW. It is a magnificent achievement, Bree. Just talk me through the significance of something like this. Oh, it's massive. And I think, you know, obviously with our seasons being a little bit shorter, it takes us a while to sort of get to that milestone at this point. Um, hopefully in the future it won't take that long. But, um, yeah, it's it's massive. I think it's things like being able to stay fit, stay on the park, yeah. um, obviously playing in things like finals, things like that. But, yeah, credit to those girls obviously getting to the big 50 and hopefully we see more to come. And like I said, in the future, hopefully it's, it's quicker for us to get to that milestone. Well, there certainly will be more to come because, Libby, you are going to play your 50th <laughs> game this Saturday night against the Blues. This is your very first game, your very first touch, I believe, here. 100% um, disposal <laughs> efficiency. I mean, what does it mean to you, this milestone? Yeah, it's a bit surreal. Like, it's it just feels like yesterday I played my first... <laughs> A round of footy and coming from netball I think there was a lot of doubts that I wouldn't be able to compete at this level and it's just been a really amazing journey to have played across two clubs that have been in AFLW since 2013 and sort of to evolve my game to be the best I can be for my team and uh, to play in a premiership was an amazing experience and then to head into another final series this year is also going to be really exciting. Yeah, she's eyeing off another flag, I can tell. All right, time now for a little bit of star power and we cannot go past Daisy Pierce, one of the OGs on the W show. She is a friend of this show and it was a stunning performance against Fremantle. Five goals, 17 touches. Bree, she just had a night out and uh, really the whole D's outfit did because they notched up 100 points the first time any team's done that. Oh, it's incredible and you know, you speak about someone like Day, she's just so smart. She does little things that you'd think, oh, 
you know, makes it look easy. And yep. like even a little effortless snap just that we saw before. She's just such a great player, so smart. And um, yeah, I think everybody wants Daisy on their team. I think Aerily too, like she's not that tall, but she's so strong, like when it comes to marking overhead as well, which really surprised me, Liv. This year, I'd have to say during pre-season, I was like, Daisy, you've got, this is the strongest you've ever been. <laughs> like in one-on-one -on -one contests, uh, you know, she was winning every single one of them. And us as defenders, we had to change the way we were defending in order to beat her because she's so strong body on body and she just knows the way to time her push off to get the mark. It's amazing. So she's 33, a lot of talk about the fact that this could be her last season, but watching that, surely she can play on if she wanted to. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we'd love to keep her for another year. If you're going to kick five goals, Pfeiffer, we called her plugger after the weekend. <laughs> I love it. No, she's yeah. playing some terrific footy. I do want to speak about the Ds. Bree, what have you made of them this season? I mean, obviously, second on the ladder, they're a serious contender. They've brought in some firepower, some star power up forward as well with Taylor Harris. Yep. What sets them apart from other teams in the competition and can they go all the way? Yeah, look, the D, to be honest, the Ds are probably one of my favourite teams to watch. I'm not just saying that because you're sitting <laughs> next to me, Liv. But no, they, they really are. Um, I think for me, they've just got such a good balance of experience and talent and they, the way they come together, I think, is one of the key drivers. I think as well for me, they're so skilled the way they use the football. Yeah. They have that sort of really great mix of being able to go fast when they need to but also really control the game. And I think that... You know, sometimes other teams don't quite get that balance right, but the Ds seem to have it really, um, really connected and just really right at the moment. Um, so for me, they're probably the, the key things. But like I said, one of my favourite teams to watch. I love the way they move the footy with such precision um, and everyone seems to know where each other are as well. Yeah, a really even spread of contributors, um, like similar to the Brisbane Lions and the Adelaide Crows, which is really great to see. Libby, I want to ask you, what did you learn from that prelim final mm. loss to the Crows last year? Because it was a big one and probably a, a wake-up call. Is there something that you've taken from that that's driving you forward this year? Yeah, and another game, Nat, that we took a lot from this year was against Adelaide again yep. at Norwood Oval early on in the season. And uh, for us, it's been about having the belief that we can do it. I think for numerous amount of years, we've, we've been up there, but yep. we've, in those key moments under finals pressure, we're folded. And it, it really is the fact that we have trained for this. We've trained under finals pressure, you know, during pre-season. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's now time to do it rather than can we? It's like, when will we do it? So um, for us, it's that, the, 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 I guess, the sterliness just to, to go out and get there and put our foot down from the very first bounce. So the hunger is right yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, okay, I can see it in her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Just on the Dockers, because it was a massive blowout, that game that you played over there, which probably surprised a lot of people, but they had a lot of late outs. Emma O'Driscoll, Ebony and Cara and Tony obviously out with um, the health and safety protocols very late. Coach Trent Cooper didn't want to use it as an excuse. He actually pointed out the fact that he just thought some players weren't switched on. But you look at this. I mean, the experience that the Ds had compared to the experience. It was the youngest Fremantle side since they debuted in 2017. It's, it's pretty tough, isn't it, Bree? Yeah, it, look, it is. And I think any sort of out, especially late outs for a team, would rock, rock a side. Um, in saying that, though, such a big blowout, you would have to say there's other contributing factors. Yeah. And I think, like mentioned, Trent Cooper sort of said there were some players that just weren't switched on. So I think it's just a, contribut a contributor of all sort of different areas that, that I guess, um, went towards that big loss. Michaela Weston is a great story. So she was a top-up player, got the call-up. She was at a uni function, arrived 10 minutes before the game, the younger sister of Joel Weston, who plays in the Dockers' men's side. She's usually running around for Claremont. I mean, can you imagine just rocking up 10 minutes before your AFLW debut? Like, how overwhelming would that oh. be, Libby? Yeah, oh, it would be insane, especially coming from a uni function, but I guess <laughs> you'd be pretty fresh. Like, you wouldn't have thought about the game there wouldn't be too much nerves yeah. and anxiety that will have built up because you just didn't have time to. Oh, eight disposals and three yeah. tackles and it's not a bad output is it for your first game? Oh yeah I think from all reports she's she's played a role mm -hmm. essentially so 
good on her, like oh. Liv mentioned. I guess she yeah, didn't have too much time to get those no. pre-game yeah. nerves, but at the same time, I think the nerves would have shot right up as soon as she got the call to come in, to, mm. you know, 10 minutes before or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. certainly was. Well, well done to Michaela Weston. All right, it is now time for Eyes on the Rise. And one of Bree's teammate in Eliza James has had a stunning season in 2022 so far. She was one of the NAB AFLW Rising Star nominees last week. Let's get to know her a little bit better. Hello, it's Eliza James here from the Collingwood Football Club. Oh, I'd have to say definitely a day at the beach. Anything by Rihanna, I feel like she's got some good upbeat music and she definitely gets me really pumped up. So yeah, anything by Rihanna. The most annoying teammate would by far be Alana Porter. My favourite men's player at the club would probably be Braden Maynard because he's a really good footballer and he's also a really nice person, so yeah, I'd have to say him. If I could relive one football game, it would have to be my debut game because I was so excited and I was so happy, so that would definitely be the game that I would want to relive. Favourite actor would have to be Adam Sandler because I just think he's very funny. The show I've binge watched lately would be Friends and I've watched that probably like two or three times and I'm currently watching it again, so yeah. To describe Steve in three words, I'd have to say he's really determined, um, he's very caring and he also tries to um, bring out the best in everyone, so that would, those would be my three words to describe him. There'd be many words to describe Brie Davy in three words, but my top three would definitely have to be that she's very resilient, she's very funny, and she's very humble, and she's also just a really nice person, and yeah, so that would be my top three. So funny, and also <laughs> thinks that Adam Sandler is very funny, so that equates to you're as good as Adam Sandler, Brie. Like for like, no, I, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to Second Avenue Grocer, who is a valued customer at NAB, Eliza is going to be getting this fabulous hamper filled with delicious goodies, so make sure you check them out online or in their Altona store. Brie, can you be our delivery person? You might have to <laughs> take a couple of treats for yourself. Yeah, look, well, might not ever get there with my crutches at the moment, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll, we'll help you out with that. And Libby... Actually, last time we were talking yeah. about you bringing in scones, Libby brought in <laughs> homemade yo-yos today, so we've all got a treat after the show. She's trying, trying to suck up. Suck up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, before we go, let's take a look at what is making news on social media. And Craig Stasevich, the Lions coach, will this week notch up game 50 in the AFLW which is a wonderful milestone for him, the first coach to do that. But he's a man of many talents. Here he is hitting the crossbar not once, but oh! twice, which is very, very hard to do. Have you tried to do that, Brie? Yeah, the crossbar challenge is tough. <laughs> we do that numerous times at soccer training, but, yeah, that's pretty good, Craig. Well done. Speaking of soccer training, I want to take you back because the Matildas posted a little bit of a throwback back to 2013, this photo of the Centenary Cup in Canberra. And, of course, your familiar face. <laughs> what was it like seeing this photo come up again? Oh, very nostalgic. We actually played New Zealand. This was in Canberra. Um, and we ended up winning in a penalty shootout, which I made a couple of saves yes, in. Yes, of end. course so, you did. <laughs> um, oh, it, just nostalgic and just really cool to see so many of my ex-teammates who are still playing now as well. Uh, this is the Crutch Club. I love this. Harriet Cordner and Hannah Birchall have got T-shirts made up. I think they might need to send you one, though. Have you got one <laughs> in the mail? I haven't, but how good are they? I want one. So, girls, come on. All right, send, over. send think, one out. We need it. Too many delays. <laughs> and now oh what about God, this? That's not meant no, to no, happen. No, yeah, no, I'm no, pretty no. sure that's not meant to happen. It's not meant to spark when you're trying to jump start a car. Do you have any idea how to jump stump start a car, Libby? I think I'd have more of an idea than that. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. That was Megan Kylie trying her best and everyone else was just backing away. That was too dangerous for me. Stick to your day job, Megan. All right, thank you so much for joining us on The W Show. Thanks, of course, to NAB. Libby, best of luck for you. your 50th game. It's been terrific watching your career over the last, you know, four or five years. So well done on the milestone and, and best so. of luck. Bree, best of luck with the rehab and hopefully the Pies can get up on the weekend and secure a spot in finals. Thanks very much, Nat. Thanks, Liv. All right, thanks everyone for watching. We'll be back, of course, next week with Sarah Black. Same time, same place on The W Show.